It's 5,471 kilometers. About 7.2 million steps, give or take a couple. From Grand Prairie, Alberta to St. Louis, Prince Edward Island. How do I know that? <laughs> Let me tell you a little story. September 2017, I was at a training event in Toronto. And the energy in that room was kind of like today, like it is in here. It's just incredible. People were connecting, things were happening, there was growth, it was just awesome. You ever experienced that? Maybe you're at a seminar, maybe you're experiencing it here tonight. Training event, seminar, mastermind, just around some incredible people. Things just seem to flow, don't they? But you also know that when you're around that kind of energy, there's something else that happens. You start feeding off it. You start gaining some of it. And for me, that was an incredible high I was immersed in for four days. And it was just awesome. But it's also something else that happens. You kind of get that superhuman feeling, don't you? Kind of like the Hulk. You're just feeding off that energy. And you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Stronger and stronger. You feel like you could do anything. Like you could be anybody. Like you could just step out and conquer the world. Well, that's where I was. That's when an idea that September that I had rolling around in the back of my head started to gain some power, gain some strength. And I made a committed decision. And I had the fortune to stand up, fortune or good for, or unfortunate, I guess, depends how you want to look at it, to stand up on the stage in front of 300 other of my peers and tell them what I was going to do. That I wanted to walk from Grand Prairie, Alberta, all the way to St. Louis, Prince Edward Island. Yeah, I said walk. But it gets better. I didn't want to do it by myself. I decided I was going to bring my wife, my mom, my three youngest kids with me. Yep. Cram them all in a motorhome, wife, mom, and three youngest kids, so they could spend their summer behind me, driving down the side of the highway, doing five kilometers an hour, while I walked for nine to ten hours a day for four months straight. This was going to be a family adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> Absolutely. Now hang on, before you call the hospital to come get me, let me give you a bit of the backstory and why I decided to jam everybody in a motorhome. It was October 2015. I'll take you back a couple years. Dad had been having some issues all summer. Wasn't feeling good. Flu-like symptoms, different things. Tried some different antibiotics, a few medications. Nothing seemed to be working. So the doctor ran a few extra tests, a few more things. And Mom and Dad went in for the results of those tests. And I got the phone call October 5th. <laughs> the results were devastating. Stage 3 cancer. Lung cancer. Inoperable. Incurable. The doctor said he had six to eight months to live. My whole world changed in that instant. And I made a decision right then and there that I was going to spend the Thursdays driving the hour and a half from Valley View to Grand Prairie every day to spend the afternoon with my dad, my hero. I knew he wasn't going to be around for long, so I thought I'd get some time in when I could. So I did that until that inevitable day, seven months later, sitting there on dad's bedside, holding his hand while he took his last breath of life. It's an incredible experience to go through, an incredible thing to, to feel. We buried dad July 30th, 2017 in St. Louis, just outside of St. Louis, Prince Edward Island. You're starting to see a little bit of a theme here to the, to the walk part. That's the first time I'd been back there in 30 years. I spent a little bit of time there when I was a kid growing up, back and forth a couple times, but I hadn't been back. Remembered a few things. So we took a couple weeks and spent some time there with the family, because I still got quite a bit of family that lives there. And it was incredible. By the time we got home, though, it was interesting. I don't know what it was, but there was something calling me to go back. I was drawn to go back. And it was interesting, because the idea that I shared with you earlier about the walk started to gain some strength. It started to grow. It started to be a more of a passion. And when I made that decision, I had a purpose to my walk now. 
I was walking across the country to raise money for cancer. And that, friends, is exactly what I did. Now you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, well, you know, hasn't that been done already? Isn't there better ways to do it than to spend four months on the side of the road living out of a motorhome to raise money for cancer? Yeah, absolutely. I can't even count how many I came up with in four months on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, lots. But let's get back to the real question. Why? Why do you want to load your family up and spend four months on the side of the road walking? Nine to ten hours a day, average 46 kilometers a day, for 117 days. Why? People ask me that all the time. Before I left, when I told them what I was going to do, even while we were on the road, people would ask me, why are you doing this? Why do you want to do that? You know? And my answer to them was always the same. Because I want to. I don't have a reason. I didn't need a reason. I wanted to. That was my reason. It was enough of a reason for me. Most people didn't understand that. But have you ever wanted something? You wanted it so bad you can almost taste it? You want something so bad that it just occupies your mind and your thoughts? Maybe it's a new home, new car, a relationship, a raise at work, new pair of clothes, new pair of shoes, ladies. You know, whatever that is. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, but it makes a lot of sense to you. And you don't really have a reason why. You just want it because you want it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Because the interesting thing is, when you want something like that, when it's such a passion, when it's so, uh, such a desire that you can almost feel it, there's something incredible that happens. Something absolutely incredible. Because it starts to take on some power. It starts to grow. It starts to make you do things. It starts to push you outside of your comfort zone. It starts to help you take that first step. To do what you need to do to move towards it. Because all you need is the first step. Because you take that first step, then the next one, then the next one, then a couple more. <laughs> and then it happens every time. Inevitably, that little voice in the back of your head, or else somebody else says, you know, what are you doing? You're nuts. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're not whatever enough. Who do you think you are? You're just ridiculous. You're going to do what? Come on, get back over here to reality. What are you thinking? Anybody heard that before? Yeah, absolutely. That's fear. That's other people's opinions. That's your past programming, your past conditions, your past experiences. I'll let you in on a little secret. It's not who you are. It's not what you're capable of. You can do incredible things. Don't let other people steal your dreams. You can do anything you want. Anything you set your mind to and start taking action on. Anything. It's incredible. But that fear sometimes holds us stuck. But that, my friends, is what I want to talk to you about today. Is when you've got something that you're so passionate about, that it's so, such a burning desire inside of you, that it just drives you to do things that are way outside your comfort zone, that just help you grow, that just move you towards where you want to go. That's where the power is. See, it wasn't until day one for me, halfway through day one, of my 121 day walk, that fear kicked in. What are you doing on the side of the road? What did you get yourself into, you idiot? All this sort of crap I had going through my mind. Dad's voice. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you nuts? So I had to take some time. I thought about quitting. You know, I'm just going to jump in the motorhome and we're going to head home. Nobody will know. It'll be all right. And I shook my head. No, ain't going to happen. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a tad bit stubborn. I heard some laughing back there. <laughs> it's fantastic. 
But I had to take a few minutes, and I sat by myself quietly, and I went back over the picture that I'd gone through at least a thousand times, way before I even took the first step. I could see the church coming into view. I could see myself walking across the parking lot, walking across the freshly cut grass. I could hear the mosquitoes buzzing around my head, the smell of the fresh grass, the fresh flowers. It was just incredible. I could feel the sun warmth on my face. Walking up to Dad's grave, I sat there for a few minutes and just thought about that picture. Feeling like it was already done, like I've already been there, like it's already accomplished. Feeling that sense of accomplishment. And that got me back up. And then you know what I did? That is something I'm going to share with you that is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it's a game changer. And if you take one thing away from our time here tonight, I hope it's this. Because this is going to completely change your life. I took the next step. I took action. I moved towards my goal, to what I wanted. And I literally took the next step. Because you know what happened after that? It caused me to do something. Anybody got a guess? Exactly. It caused me to take the next step and the next one. Here's a question to think about. What can you do in your life? What can you do tonight before you leave that parking lot? What can you do? One action that you can take that's going to move you closer to your goal, to what you want. What can you do? What's the first step for you? Think about that for a bit. See, when it's four o'clock in the morning, my legs hurt, my feet were full of blisters. I got out and walked, well, it was more like a hobble, for the first 15, 20, 25, 35, sometimes 45 minutes. Took me that long to get through the pain. The only thing I could focus on was take the next step, take the next step, take the next step. And that's all I did. That's all I focused on. Because the beautiful thing is that when there's something inside of you that sets you on fire, when you know where you're going, That's all you need to do, is you just need to start working towards it. There's going to be problems. I wasn't worried about the next hill, or the rain, or the weather, or seeing some wildlife on the side of the road. Because there's going to be problems. There's going to be challenges in life. It's the way it is. Anybody get through life so far this far without having any problems or challenges? No? I can't see the middle, but I'm pretty sure nobody's got their hand up over there either. Oh, somebody had their hand up in the back. Trying to be funny. Things are going to come up, but as long as you take that next step, you can get past it all. So you don't let the fear of that next hill or of things hold you back or the circumstances, you know, don't allow yourself to manifest and create those fears and those things that hold you back in life. Be in the present, be here, be now. That's all we have is now. Enjoy it, embrace it, be here. You know, countless times I had people ask me, well, you know, how are you going to do this part of the walk or that part of the walk? You know, watch out, my friend got arrested in Quebec. Anybody hear that? Yeah, probably. Well, we were safe. How are you going to walk away from your business for four months? How are you going to get across the bridge? You know, all this sort of stuff. My answer was the same. We'll fix that problem or we'll deal with that problem when we get there. And I'm going to get there. You guys probably know the answer already. One step at a time, right? Absolutely. One step at a time. See, why would we spend our time worrying about things next week, next month, next year? Things that might not even happen. Why would you spend your time and give that your mental energy? You know, because us as human beings, that's one of our biggest problems. We manifest this stuff in our head. And it grows into a mountainous size. And that fear just cripples us. And it holds us stuck. And we do it all ourselves. We do it to ourselves. When that issue or that challenge or that problem is probably pretty small. If it's even a problem at all. See, I didn't worry about what the weather was going to be. I didn't worry about what was going to happen or the route we were going to take. Was there challenges? Yeah. 
I didn't worry about the traffic or the weather or the animals that we might see along the side of the road or the wildlife. Because I controlled the things that I could control. I stopped trying to control the things that I couldn't. There are certain things in life that are outside of our control. Would you agree? And we spend a lot of time thinking about them sometimes, don't we? Yeah. But I controlled the things that I could control. I can control my attitude. I can control my happiness. I could control staying dry. So I focused on controlling the things that I could control. I controlled me. And I focused on those things. I controlled my thoughts, my feelings, my attitude, and my actions. I challenge you to do the same. Stop trying to control the things you can't control. Only focus on the things that you can control. Your life is going to change. Dave mentioned it earlier. Focus on happiness. Focus on what you want instead of what you don't want. Because that momentum that comes with taking that next step, the speed that builds when you work towards your goal, towards your destination, it builds and it grows and eventually it becomes an incredible momentum that will move whatever gets in your way so that you can get to your destination. So whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, Whatever you want to achieve, all you need is the first step. Stop trying to use your logic to get you there. Allow that want deep inside of you to grow into a heated, burning desire. Something that kicks you out of bed every morning and has you a hard time going to bed at night. It doesn't, make se- it doesn't matter if it makes sense to anybody else. You think when I told them what I was going to do that anybody thought it was a logical idea? <laughs> nope. I don't think I met one person. Well, maybe Dave, he's pretty happy. He, he supported it quite a bit. But make it into that heated, burning desire that pushes you to do those things, to step out of your comfort zone, to be the incredible person that you can be, to do incredible things in your life. Because all you need is the first step. Thank you.